Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Welcome back to Back to the Future. Apparently, Doc Brown, Dad, Judge Brown is trying to find him. We gotta, come on, Emmett, you gotta have the balls. Do this thing. Do your science. Come on, Emmett. Emmett, Shh. don't give me away. I thought you weren't scared of your father anymore. When he's in a mood like this, I'd have to be suicidal not to be scared. Just jump in the levitator and go. What's he gonna do? Shoot me down with an anti-aircraft gun? Pretty sure he doesn't got one of those in his pockets. Come on, Emmett. You can't miss your big moment. You don't look very dignified crouching down there, you know. Better undignified than dead. Let me talk to him. You can't hide from justice! <clears throat> you don't think you can shelter him? Maybe Emmett would come out from wherever it is he's hiding if you tried the reasonable approach. This is the reasonable approach! Don't antagonize him. Well, if you're not gonna say anything... So he is up there with you! Thanks a lot. Son, I order you to come down from there this second! I don't think the fourth! I... Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. So, what's your plan? I just stand here like this indefinitely. After a few centuries, the process of petrification will set in, and that'll be that. Okay, that is a plan. Maybe he'll give you a fair chance to explain yourself. He is a judge, after all. Yes, a judge who's already passed sentence. He won't listen to me. He never has. I'll be right back. I want to speak to my son! Emmett's not ready to talk to you. Uh, directly. Oh, God. I suppose you're his mouthpiece? I guess so, yeah. He says it's no use talking to you. You never listen? That only shows how pig-headed he is. Of course I listen! If he can justify his craziness, I'll be only too happy to indulge it. Stay right there. I'm not going anywhere. You dare- Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. You heard him. He said he'll listen to you. Well... At least give it a shot. Father? Son? You've never understood the first thing about me. All you want to do is step on me, squelch my natural instincts. Understand. You don't know what it's like what to be young. You, you don't know what it's You're like to have dreams, to have ambitions. Well, so great and so way. powerful that they've got a life of their own. You. And it's all you can do to hang on for dear life while they gallop on wins. where they must. Don't this is America, Pop. And in America, a person doesn't have to do what his father did. Isn't that why you came to America? To live where there wouldn't be so many rules? Well, we talked. Are you happy? We didn't quite go as planned. Please, y you gotta get out of Emmett's way. I have yet to hear a compelling or even coherent reason why. Look, Your Honor, you don't see it, but there's an awful lot riding on Emmett's demonstration. All the more reason why I've got to put a stop to it. Look me in the eyes, young man. I expect you know my son pretty well by now. Do you seriously think his exhibition is going to be a success? Maybe not. I mean, isn't Emmett entitled to make a few mistakes? Emmett has exceeded his quota for one lifetime. It's my job as his father to see to it there are no more mistakes. Emmett's just... Stubborn, willful, single-minded, incorrigible, and obsessed. Okay, but if you look at it from the right angle, those traits are kinda... good. That may be your angle, Sonny, but I'm not so sure it's the right one. Make no mistake, those are traits that lead to trouble. He gets them from his mother. Emmett's just trying to make a name for himself. Maybe things were different when you were a kid, but nowadays you, you gotta take chances. What do you know about taking chances? Try moving to a strange country where you don't speak the language with only two dollars to your name. You? You bet your socks, me! 
and I made out all right, too. How'd your dad feel about it at the time? Papa? He was fit to be tied. He called me a disobedient little... So your father didn't approve of you coming to America? Well, Papa never really understood the younger generation. He came around a bit in the end, but by then it was too late to... Tell him I'll listen to him. I want to listen to him. If he wants to talk. Don't yell at him, Emmett. Emmett, prepare to play peacemaker again, Pollyanna. Deep down, he's just worried about you hurting yourself. No amount of physical pain could equal the pain he's already inflicted to my spirit. Okay, so he's got a strong personality. Strong personality. Lord save us from strong fathers. Why couldn't I have been born to a nice, wimpy milk toast? Yeah, well, that's no picnic either. The important thing is, fathers can change. Says you. I really think he means it this time. He won't listen to me. He says you get your stubbornness from your mother. Well, that's the limit. He's not satisfied with insulting me. He's got to drag my mother through the dirt, too. Mother isn't at all like me. She's gentle and sweet and endlessly patient. If anything, I'm more like... Oh, skip it. You were starting to say that you're like... Skip it. Can it be that you and your dad? No. Next subject. Emmett, stop being a dope. You've got your pride. Okay, I, I get it. And so does he, but... What's the harm in trying to make peace with the guy? He's your family, and family's important. Sometimes it's, well, even more important than we realize. Did the game just... May I come up? So, you think my new invention is a disaster waiting to happen? Yes, yes I do. And I'm here to say, if any son of mine is going to make of himself a public disaster, I insist on being there to support him. Pop! You're gonna change your tune once you see this baby go airborne. You see, the force field generated by the static accumulator... Marty, give Trixie the signal. We're ready for liftoff. Oh, good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us through that unavoidable delay. And now the Hill Valley Expo is pleased as punch to present Mr. Emmett Brown and his electrokinetic levitator! I could change her. Things could be different. Forget about it. Come on. We gotta find a way to stop her before. No, don't come any closer. Stop. Go away! But... Move! Move! Buddy! Oh my god! Doc! Say something. 
chromium, lithium, potassium, iridium, titanium, ruthenium. I'll get, I'll get help. Newspaper. What? You mean? I'm gonna get you to a hospital, Doc. You're gonna be okay. Yes. Oh, I think I am going to be okay, Marty. No, come on, Doc. Doc, don't do this. Don't go. Doc, come back. Have you been out here the whole time? Damn it. Um, is it over already? Oh, it's over, all right. You missed a very <laughs> wild party. I'm afraid I've been banned from the expo for the next 50 years. And if I were you, I wouldn't go back in either. At least not until all the broken glass is swept up. Oh, what was I thinking? Naturally, the ionic wind generated by an electromagnet of that size is going to play havoc with a merely mechanical steering mechanism. We need a much more advanced control system. I wonder if we could find a way to translate the body's own gravitational field into electrokinetic force, one might be able to direct the ionic current simply by shifting one's weight. Oh, great Scott, that's it! And you're, you're not discouraged? Discouraged? By what? You mean what happened in there? Oh, that was a learning experience. The way I see it, it's those little mistakes along the way that advance us along the pathway of knowledge. Come on, there's no time to lose. Let's get back to the lab and... I'm sorry, is something wrong? It's a long story. Let's just say I, uh, I lost somebody. Oh, how sad. Anyone I know? It was, uh, Carl Sagan. What? The guy who tried to hire me in there? You were friends with him? Strange. But how- Don't worry about it. It's got nothing to do with you. What? You're a complete mystery to me, Marty. Where you come from, what you're doing here, there's one thing I do know. Whatever it is, it does have something to do with me. Uh, please, Emmett, don't ask What's any- What's this? Come on, let me see. I deserve an explanation. I don't think that's a good idea that might ruin the space-time continuum. You wouldn't understand. Oh yeah, try me. What's that? An explanation. But you've got to promise me, don't look at it until you get the key to the city. Huh? Emmett! Just promise. Emmett, where are you, my son? I'll be right there, Pop. Key to the city? I don't understand. And you can't understand. Not for a long time. It would do irreparable damage to something. Just, just say you promise. Okay, I promise. Wait, I will see you again, right? I guarantee it.
Hey, it worked. So, you were the same Marty. Funny how memory can play tricks on a person. I remembered you being much taller. How was the ceremony? Long. You've got a theatrical way of sending messages. Only way I could do it without messing up your timeline. Very clever, but what are you doing in 1931? I came to rescue you. Teenage me? No, you, you, but then teenage you got mixed up in it. See, you were in jail and... Never mind, it's better I don't know. Let's just get back to 1986. That is, unless your presence has caused any other time anomalies. Me? Nah, no. Well, I'm still a little confused about my... Where is he? Where is that no good son of mine? He's not worthy of the McFly name. You seen my Artie anywhere? Artie McFly? That's the one. Just got a call from Melvin at the city records office. He tells me the dad blamed fool's gun and got himself hitched to a Canadian floozy. Can you believe it? Hitched? Married. I swear, that boy's gonna put his pop on the new grave. <laughs> so that's how she got her job back. Ah, he, he's married the wrong grandma. I mean, Trixie's not my grandma. And if she's not my grandma, I'm not me. Wait, that was great grandpa Willie. I met him when he was a baby. He peed on me. Holy crap, uh, Doc, I'm gonna disappear again. Calm down, Marty. You seem reasonably solid right now. Whatever the problem is, I'm sure we can undo it with the help of- That car! Oh, great. How the hell did she get back here? She? You? You're not Edna. What's going on here? Is this some plot to put me in the nut house? No, it's all very simple, Danny. Oh, I'm sure it is. Tell me, did I or did I not just chase Edna Strickland off in this car? Not this exact car, but a car just like it. A car with a nasty habit of disappearing into thin air? Well... Wait, Edna Strickland just disappeared in the DeLorean? If that's what you call it, it made a loud noise, and then wham! Nothing! Great Scott! Marty, do you have any notion what date she might have jumped to? None at all, Doc. See, that DeLorean's time circuits are out of whack. They could jump to any date at all. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. Let's just hope she jumped into the future. The far future. If she's jumped into the past... You think she might mess up the time stream? Wait a minute. This is Edna. Of course she would mess up the time stream. Uh, guys, you mind telling me what the hell you're... Uh-oh. Doc? Did we just leave Hill Valley? No, I believe Hill Valley just left us. H how? Something must have happened to it. A long time ago. Well, now you two look at my lost. Hey, what on earth is that thing? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's an experimental vehicle. Pay it no mind. Look, maybe you can help us. Did your son just marry a Canadian saloon singer named Trixie? Artie? Pshaw, that boy ain't got nerve to ask a girl to the church social. You acquainted with him? Only slightly. Oh, we're just passing through. We hope. Tell us. We're looking for Hill Valley. Well, which is it? A hill or a valley? No, it's a town. It's a town called Hill Valley. Hill Valley a town? Say, I, I think I once heard that there was a town here a long time ago. Don't know much about it, though. 
Just as I suspected. All right, everybody. I think this is where I'm going to end the episode. Um, next time, we're going to continue to try and find what the heck happened to Hill Valley. Thanks for watching, everybody.